Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on Days of Our Lives, Kayla proposes an idea to Chad, Bobby plays with Jada, Kate gets inspiration, and Steve embarks on a new adventure. Paulina tells Abe at home on July 4th that she is pleased she is not to blame for Chanel's miscarriage, but she is still devastated for her and Johnny. At least they're not relocating to Los Angeles, Abe remarks. They realize it's time for body and soul, but the news comes on instead. Marlena apologizes to Johnny regarding the baby over the phone at home. When she hangs up, Steve comes by. He confessed to assisting Clyde escape, but he excluded John and Ava. However, Jada does not believe it, so she may approach and ask questions. He assumed John would be back from Greece by now. Marlena says they haven't been able to communicate on the phone and their texts have been brief. She worries that he does not want to come home. She doesn't think Steve is aware of this, but John attempted to assassinate him before leaving for Greece. Steve gives a gaping look. Stephanie marches into the police station to encourage Jada to talk. Julie encourages Chad at Horton House to put down his laptop and stop watching the video. Chad says that's all he can think of. Is that you, Abby? He asks the shaky video of a blonde woman. Are you out there somewhere? Chad closes his computer. He used to know how Abby moved, but now he can't recall. He should know whether that's his wife or not. Julie believes Clyde intended to drive him mad. Chad recalls the night he found Abigail and how Kayla informed him later at the hospital that she had left. Could Kayla have overlooked something? Julie proposes him speak to her. Paulina leaves for the workplace as Abe complains about body and soul. Kate arrives and informs him that his favorite soap opera has not only been preempted, but also canceled. She understands how significant the show was for him while he was healing. Stephanie meets Paulina at the square. People are unhappy with Paulina's decision to replace D.A. Trask, a woman of color, with E.J., a corrupt affluent white guy who had previously been removed from that position. They claim she treated Melinda like trash in front of Bobby. She might be the only one who persuades him to let Everett out. Bobby stashes his medications in his hospital room. He's content just as he is, with Everett out of the way for good. Julie encourages Chad at Horton House to put down his laptop and stop watching the video. Chad says that's all he can think of. Is that you, Abby? He asks the shaky video of a blonde woman. Are you out there somewhere? Chad closes his computer. He used to know how Abby moved, but now he can't recall. He should know whether that's his wife or not. Julie believes Clyde intended to drive him mad. Chad recalls the night he found Abigail and how Kayla informed him later at the hospital that she had left. Could Kayla have overlooked something? Julie proposes him speak to her. Paulina leaves for the workplace as Abe complains about body and soul. Kate arrives and informs him that his favorite soap opera has not only been preempted, but also canceled. She understands how significant the show was for him while he was healing. Stephanie meets Paulina at the square. People are unhappy with Paulina's decision to replace D.A. Trask, a woman of color, with E.J., a corrupt affluent white guy who had previously been removed from that position. They claim she treated Melinda like trash. At the townhouse, Marlena tells Steve how the pawn card triggered John at Maggie's wedding. He grabbed up a gun at Constantine's request, unsure what to do. She believes he is keeping away because he does not want to hurt him. Steve says he has to be the one to bring him home. If he is sentenced to probation, of course. John would not be in this situation if it weren't for him. I owe him my life. Bobby reads a book when Jada enters his room. He beams as he tells that he is currently reading a murder mystery she recommended. He suspects Dr. What's Her Face or Everett's neurotic girlfriend sent her over. Jada tells him that they are all worried about him. She understands he had no control over the things she accused him of. She bursts into tears as he confesses that he never stopped loving her and never intended to hurt her. He inquires if they can get over it. She accepts his apologies and states that she still cares for him. 
Bobby hardens as he realizes Jada is there for Everett. She reminds him that she is currently with Rafe and that Everett is his host personality while he is an alter. Bobby becomes defensive, ranting about the horrors he has saved Everett from. Jada describes him as heroic and strong, but possibly a touch too strong. Maybe if he lets Everett out to confront the reality, he can help Bobby. Chad visits Kayla's office at the hospital. He asks her to keep this between them as he gives her the video of the mysterious woman. She can't determine whether it's Abigail or not. Chad wonders if Kayla, who was the last person Abby saw before she died, is still alive. Kayla says maybe. Still at the penthouse, Steve receives a call from Justin, who informs him that he has received a suspended sentence and 100 hours of community service. Steve informs Marlena that now that he is no longer on bail, he is free to visit Greece. Marlena is grateful, and she knows John will be too. Stephanie encourages that Paulina lean into the adjustments she has made. They'll launch a campaign to make EJ appear heroic. For example, releasing Gabby would allow him to make amends for placing her in jail in the first place. They will have a news conference to discuss it, but it can also be used to highlight Paulina's successes and future goals. Paulina fears it may come across as dishonest. Stephanie proposes that EJ give the news conference instead, as he is never hesitant about bragging. Paulina agrees. In Bobby's room, Jada tries to persuade him that letting Everett go is better because he would always be a part of him. Bobby responds that he can help her solve a crime. But if Everett returns, she'll never learn the truth. She inquires about the nature of the crime. Nothing too serious, he happily declares. It's just murder. Kate thinks at Abe's apartment that the cancellation of body and soul could be beneficial to them. Abe regrets not knowing how the narratives will conclude. Or, Kate continues, maybe we will know. Rather than producing a completely new show, they could purchase the rights to body and soul. At the hospital, Kayla tells Chad about the countless sailmites who have reportedly died and returned, demonstrating that nothing is impossible. Aside from Dr. Rolf, there are medications that can reduce respiration and heart rate, giving the appearance of death. She recalls that no autopsy was performed, but the funeral home would have needed to embalm her. There's just one way to tell if that actually happened. After Chad has left, Steve visits Kayla's office. He assures John that he will not be imprisoned, but he is going to Greece for him. Stephanie visits Marlena and informs her that Jada is currently with Everett. Meanwhile, Bobby invites Jada to come see him tomorrow. They can discuss the murder then. He returns to his book. In the square, Paulina leaves a message for EJ as Chad approaches her table. He needs her consent to exhume his wife's remains. At the same time, Johnny was replaced on the project he was going to work on in Los Angeles, so while that was unfortunate, there is a silver lining, he and Chanel will not be leaving Salem. Days of our lives spend a few weeks convincing us that Johnny and Chanel were heading for California so he could finally get into show business. But it was never in doubt for their actors. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.